Despite the frosty ground and chilly air, I've always found the forest deeply comforting on late October mornings. Fog wraps around the trees like a thick blanket as the sun gently rises, turning the morning sky the softest hues of blue and yellow. The trees whisper an almost forgotten lullaby to the birds who echo their song. A tapestry of gold and crimson carpets the ground. Clear skies shimmer in glassy pools. And after months of restless summer, the world is finally still. Mornings like these remind me of the poem Fall Song by Mary Oliver. Another year gone, leaving everywhere its rich spiced residues. Vines, leaves, the uneaten fruits crumbling damply in the shadows, unmattering. Back from the particular island of this summer. This now, that now is nowhere except underfoot moldering in that black subterranean castle of unobservable mysteries. Roots and sealed seeds and the wanderings of water. This I try to remember when time's measure painfully shapes. For instance, when autumn flares out at the last, boisterous and like us, longing to stay how everything lives, shifting from one bright vision to another, forever in these momentary pastures. Hello friends, I 
had the most amazing morning outside. The fall leaves are just absolutely breathtaking this time of year. Fall foliage season usually begins in early September and goes through early November where I live, but this time of year in late October it's considered peak week, which means that the fall leaves are at their absolute best and they're so vibrant and beautiful and I'm just trying to savor every minute of it because I feel like I'm living in an autumn wonderland. And as if this time of year couldn't get any better, next week is Halloween and I'm so excited. Halloween is one of my favorite holidays. I just love the spookiness and the magic that it brings. So I'm going to spend the rest of today getting ready for Halloween. I'm going to stop by the pumpkin patch and pick up a couple of pumpkins for Alex and I to carve later. But first I'm going to stop by this really cool Harry Potter themed gift shop that I love visiting this time of year. And then tonight we're going to carve jack-o-lanterns, watch a fall movie, and spend a cozy night in. So if all of that sounds good to you, grab something to drink, get cozy, and let's spend this October day together. So yummy. Yay, I got pumpkins! 
pumpkins. They're really heavy though, so I'm going to put them down. I'm so excited for our pumpkin carving movie night, and I've decided I'm going to make one of my favorite Halloween recipes for dessert. It's a black tahini chocolate bark that I made for my blog a couple of years ago. If you've never had tahini before, it's a paste made from ground sesame seeds, and it has a really delicious nutty flavor. It's a little bit similar in taste to peanut butter, and it's used a lot in Middle Eastern foods like hummus, and I love it. I like to put it in salad dressings, and I like to bake with it, and it's really, really good with chocolate. The two flavors complement each other so, so well. Tahini is typically made from white sesame seeds, so it has kind of a light yellow color, but for this recipe, I'm using black tahini, which is just tahini made from black sesame seeds, and it has this naturally beautiful, rich black color, and it's going to look so cool with the chocolate bark. It gives it this witchy yet elevated feel that's so perfect for Halloween. Black tahini can be a bit difficult to find in stores, but you can get it online or you can make it yourself. It's super easy to make. You just blend black sesame seeds, coconut oil, and sesame oil until it's completely smooth. And it's really delicious and such a fun ingredient for Halloween cooking. So I highly recommend trying some. So without further ado, let's go make some chocolate bark. I just finished Slewfoot and it was so good. Oh my goodness. I started it yesterday and I couldn't put it down right away. I read most of the book yesterday and then I just wrapped it up today. It was definitely scarier than I thought it would be, which I didn't mind at all. But if you aren't a big fan of scary or kind of gory um, books, I wouldn't recommend this. However, if you like dark fantasy books with kind of a historical angle, I can't recommend this enough. It was really wonderful and very well written. And the author is also an illustrator, which I think is so incredible. The level of talent to be able to build worlds, not just with words, but with visuals is just absolutely mind boggling to me. It's set in the 1600s in colonial New England, and it's about a woman named Abatha who is recently widowed and a bit of an outcast from her community. And she falls into this really 
bad situation and the only person who will help her is this creature or spirit from the woods. And I don't want to say too much more to give away the plot, but a huge theme in the book is good versus evil and how much our own perspectives and identities um, can influence our perceptions of good and evil. So I highly recommend Slewfoot by Brome if you're looking for a scary, creepy Halloween read. I'm getting pretty hungry, so Alex and I are going to go make some pumpkin pasta from Trader Joe's to fit with our pumpkin-themed evening. It sounds so good, so let's Let's go make some.
of times in previous videos, but one of my favorite activities is to read children's books, specifically the ones I loved when I was little. And one of my favorite stories of all time was the Brambley Hedge Collection. The author, Jill Barkham, wrote a book for every season and a couple of other little stories in the collection. And they are all books about little mice who live in the woods inside of a big tree. And Jill Barkham illustrated all of her stories and her paintings are absolutely beautiful. You can just feel her love of the natural world through her paintings. And I really believe these books shaped how I saw the world as a child and still how I see it today. Um, they really taught me how to look for the beauty and the magic in nature and in everyday life. And I'm so grateful that I grew up reading them and that I can still come back to them today and be reminded of that really beautiful way of seeing the world. So this book is called Autumn Story and um, the illustrations, of course, are amazing. I remember being a kid and spending hours just staring at these illustrations and looking at all of the intricacies and the paintings Paintings. This one in particular was one of my favorites and still is today. So thank you for letting me share my love of Rambly Hedge with you. I would love to hear what your favorite childhood books are too because I feel like they say so much about who we are today. I hope you have a wonderful week and a great Halloween for all of you who celebrate. Thank you so much for being here and I will see you next time. Good night friends.